Hello everybody and welcome to the WAVE Channel 5, Greenville Public Access TV, as we continue our series on the stores and shops that make up the downtown business area of Greenville, Ohio. Alex Warner along with Nick Schmidt, our videographer, and today we've taken the camera up to Montage here on South Broadway and uh, we're going to talk to Aaron Cox and then hopefully later on his wife Michelle as we talk about a business that's uh, been in existence since around 2000, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe a little before that. And uh, Aaron, let's talk just a little bit, first of all, about your background. I've uh, been in the restaurant business pretty much since I was in college. Uh, started off in several chain restaurants along with my wife. Uh, moved up here from South Carolina to run the Versailles Inn for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. And then uh, we bought this existing business from Jay and Rochelle Rex back in the early 2000s and have had it since then. Where from in uh, South Carolina? We lived in Myrtle Beach, <clears throat> also in Columbia. Okay. So you came from the beaches of Myrtle Beach to Greenville, Ohio. Right. How, how, what brought you up here? Though? Well, I, I'm originally from Ansonia. Right. Okay. Uh, moved down to uh, Myrtle Beach after college just to have some fun and found a good job. And my wife's from Charleston, and so we met each other down there. And uh, the opportunity to run the inn, the hotel, and the restaurant brought right. me back up here to, to do that. Yeah. So. yeah, hopefully a lot of people are aware that Aaron was up there at uh, the inn at Versailles, I should say. Um, okay, so let's talk just a second then. So this was opened originally by Jay and Rochelle Rex at that yes. time, correct? And, and that was not a restaurant or anything like that. Uh, uh, down the street closer to where the KitchenAid experience was, she had a uh, shop down there where she did her florals and those sorts of items. And then they moved it down here. The, uh, the florals made up a, a very big part of the business, uh, the retail end of it. Mm -hmm. They did have food, but it wasn't to the extent that we have it also with the alcohol, et cetera. I don't know if you recall, but they used to have the blue room here next right. door right. and uh, they shared the same kitchen. Uh, when we bought it, we just bought this part of the business and uh, Vionique's, which had their clothing store upstairs in the mezzanine, bought the building next door to expand to go into there. Yeah, we've done a show earlier this year, some of you have seen on uh, Unique's, and we talked a little bit about how, every now and then does that still open up when you have oh. something special, you open the two stores up? Yeah, we do uh, evening events, and a lot of times during the summer where we have a lot of traffic, there's two fire doors on each side that they used when it was for access to the kitchen, but also in the front, and uh, we'll open those up and give our, you know, give the customers access to go back and forth. It's a win-win for us right. that way. Yeah. Okay, so when you purchased the store and the business then, what you, you just decided we're going to expand and really expand the food part of it, correct? Well, that was, uh, my wife's got more experience in the retail, but the food side was my bread and butter as well as the right. wine and the alcohol end of it. Uh, they're doing the private events in the evening. So it we just behooved us to do that. It was more in our wheelhouse. So we just started to expand that at that point. And we've seen a very big growth in our lunch business since that point. Oh, yeah. It's just amazing how many people that eat downtown Greenville in the middle of the workday come to Montage. Yeah. We also do a lot of deliveries. Uh, on any given day, you know, we'll do over 150 to 200 lunch deliveries, boxed meals or trays around to, you know, all of the larger corporations in town. I didn't know that. So you have certain items on the menu then that you can put together that way? Well, they can. Usually it'll be a set, maybe a set box lunch or trays of sandwiches and salads or they'll order off the menu. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's, we're very fortunate to have the industry in the town that we do. Um, it's, it's a big part of our business. Now, do you do catering events also yes. in addition to that? Uh, cater weddings. Uh, we'll go all the way down to the north side of Dayton. We do, uh, we do uh, events in Piqua. We were just in Winchester last week. Uh, cater all different types of events. Okay. Yeah, I think a lot of people out there probably aren't aware of that that's a big part of your business. It very so. much is, yes. And then we'll talk a little later on in the show about some of the special events you host here and uh, take a look at some of the other facilities they have uh, up here at Montage. We're going to take a break for just a second. We're going to start taking a look at the different areas here of the things that make up Montage and make it one of the key components of downtown Greenville. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, this is a privilege that few civilians have. You get to go behind the counter here at Montage. And Aaron, of course, your training. Let's talk. You said you went to college 
uh, for culinary arts no, or what? My, my wife and I have just uh, both worked in the restaurants our whole life. Okay. I went to went to Bowling Green, got a marketing and communications degree, but put myself through college as a bartender, waiter, cook, etc. Okay. And my wife uh, has worked in restaurants her whole, whole life as well. Okay, that's what brought this all about then. Well, hey, you know, when people come into Montage, they immediately just think soups, sandwiches, salads. That's, that's your specialties, correct? Yes, it is. All of the salads we make in-house, um, they're all our own recipes. Um, sandwiches, we slice the meat here. We uh, roast our own roast beef off. Um, everything's done in here. The desserts we do purchase, uh, this, that's not my talent. So, okay. But the salads and everything else we do here, and our girls here do a great job of putting everything together for us during the day as well. Well, how many employees do you have? I mean, it's part-time, full-time it, staff. It fluctuates. Right now we have 11. Okay. So, uh, you know, everybody has to have time off, et cetera. Exactly. So we try to accommodate things as much as we can. We do have a lot of seasonal help during the summer. Unfortunately, that's when more people are available. That's when we're busiest. So it works out very well that way. Now, why would you be busiest in the summer? Just because of tour groups coming through or what? Uh, a little bit of everything. We do host uh, bus tour groups that go through the KitchenAid, and then they go through the KitchenAid experience. But uh, it's just... When the weather's nicer, people are out more, they're walking up and down the streets. I can tell you, the first warm day in April or May, it's, it's just like the floodgates open, and we're busy <laughs> from then on until October. Well, how did you decide, when you were first looking at this and knew this was becoming available, how did you decide you wanted to stay in the downtown area? Well, we know that we wanted to do something primarily lunch, because we were going to, you know, the family thing, we didn't want to be open at night every night. Right. Right. So we wanted something with uh, accommodating hours. And the downtown area with Greenville at that time was really on the rise. You know, the, down, the Main Street Greenville slash downtown Greenville uh, organization had really started to take some uh, take hold. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really starting to grow at that point. And downtown was really starting to get revitalized. Right. And so you decided to keep it here. Uh, when you talk about hours, what are your hours? Uh, 8.30 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon, Monday through Saturday. Uh, and then we do a lot of private events in the evening as well. Yeah, we're going to talk about those private events a little bit later on. Uh, so at 8.30 then, what are you serving? We just have coffee and pastries open, but we're here getting ready in the morning, um, getting, like I said, the to-go orders ready, uh, getting the salads ready in the case, slicing, you know, just every, everyday prep that we have to do. So if we're here, we might as well be open. And we have a lot of people come in and just sit and have a cup of coffee and use the Internet or, you know, get us some scones or whatever and just yeah. hang out in the morning okay and i know the salads now a lot of these are your own recipes that you've come up with correct uh there were a few that we got from jay and rochelle when they had it before the case that they had in in here before was about half the size so on any given day there would only be eight or nine salads mm -hmm. i mean there's days in here now we'll have over 20 um but we do we've come up with all of them on our own barring those like the chicken salad was their recipe but we've come up with the uh, spinach kale the garlic fettuccine which have become fast favorites with uh, the local group yeah, that do you out. rotate there i mean you keep the mainstays and then rotate some in and out seasonally or not we have we have about 10 of them that we keep in here all of the time and the rest of them we rotate out both seasonally based on how good the produce is you know obviously the cost of items that we have right. to put in the salad but uh, we have 10 core salads and the rest of them we rotate through. Mm -hmm. And if you know that you're coming in on a certain day and you want to make sure salad's there, I'll make that salad uh, that day just so you, you, you know, we want everybody to be satisfied. Can, uh, can a person come in and say, hey, you know, Aaron, I'd like uh, your cucumber salad. Can I get like uh, two quarts of it? Can sure. they do that? Absolutely. We got the different sizes here and uh, you can buy as much or as little as you like. Okay. We uh, just got done with graduation weekend and we sent out over 180 pounds of salad. <laughs> <laughs> this past Saturday. Big bowls of it, big tubs of it that's, for all the graduation parties. That's a lot of salad. It was a lot of salad. <laughs> okay, the sandwiches then. I mean, we look up here at the display. You've got the wraps and the burritos, quesadillas. Uh, the soups, I see today you've got special on, what was it? Chicken corn chowder and potato cheese. All of the soups we make in-house as well. Uh, the, are there certain days that are certain soups then for the, specials? Uh, the, the potato cheese soup we have every day. Okay. But the other soups we just rotate through. And... There's really no rhyme or reason. It's just whatever. <laughs> Again, people come in and they request a soup for a certain day. So we'll make it and run that for two days and then we'll run something else. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're trying to be as accommodating as possible. The sandwiches up here, all of the sandwiches are either named after a family member or a oh. friend okay. or some of them are even uh, Michelle and I and our daughter's pets that we've had. <laughs> so 
We that's everything's very personalized as far as the sandwiches and yeah. wherever it goes. Do uh, do you uh, with some of these different sandwiches and everything? What would you say are your top three or four favorite sandwiches? The the twisted ham, which is on a pretzel roll, and then we also have a rosemary ciabatta with turkey and pesto mayonnaise. Okay. And then the chicken salad croissant, obviously, yeah. is probably yeah. our, one of our most popular ones. Yeah. yeah. When did you start getting into wraps and uh, quesadillas and the burritos? The quesadillas and the burritos, just a few years ago, we came up with a bean and rice salad. And then just eating, well, eating the same thing in here kind of gets boring every day. So, you know, you're always trying to experiment and throw stuff together. And we already had the wraps, so we threw some, some of the bean and rice mix in with some chicken and some turkey. and made it put some salsa on it and it made a pretty good burrito so that's that's the base of our burrito now so it works out pretty well of course i know you have regular customers regular clientele or do you find that a lot of people as they come in with some of these tour groups are just surprised to find something like this in downtown well, they greenville al they always say it surprises them like something that would be in the short north in, in columbus right. or even in soho in new york but uh yeah we're always we're always flattered when they tell us that it's a compliment by for sure. Yeah, I mean, because this really is unique to a town this size to have something of this quality. Well, we're, we're very, uh, we're very thankful for, to the customer base. We're very thankful for the staff that we have, and uh, we're just thankful overall for the business that we have. Well, we're going to come back in just a second. So we've taken a little bit of a look here at the the restaurant aspect of it. Now we're going to go over. We're going to take a look at uh, boy, what a vast variety of wines you have for sale. And we'll be back in just a minute here as you watch the Main Street Greenville series here on the Wave Channel 5. Talking to Aaron here just a little bit ago off camera and uh, Aaron let's talk just kind of tell everybody kind of how you met your wife. I think that's kind of an interesting story. Well uh, we were I, after college I moved down to uh, Myrtle Beach and decided to surf down there a little bit and I was just bartending and uh, Happy go lucky guy, about 22, 23. Uh, and <laughs> got a job at, at a restaurant, and uh, she was working there. And of course, the next thing you know, there we were. So it it was destiny, I guess, that I moved down there. And she originally moved up to Myrtle Beach from Charleston. Okay. So it was just the odds of us meeting each other were, but that's the way it was supposed to be. And I found out that he and Michelle both were co manager or assistant managers at a place called T-Bones down there. And amazingly enough, my wife and I have eaten there. Yep. Great food. I mean, it's a chain in the region down there. Regional correct? chain, yeah, down in the Carolinas. And uh, they've got a couple in, in, in Georgia as well. Yeah. Okay, so now we've moved over here. And let's talk about how you got into wines and, and the different beverages. Well, you know, my, my wife and I both really enjoy wine. Uh, all different kinds. And when we bought the business, uh, Jane Rochelle did have a liquor license. Okay. And but it was mostly sold over at the uh, it, it, car it carried over to the blue room, um, so we bought some rackage of course, and we started just got into it a little bit more and more. Um, we're, we're fortunate to have some uh, very educated reps that call on us. They help me out as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know we've got some imports. We've got our California wines, and then we just decided to extend it all the way down the wall then yeah. as well. So it's it's a lot of fun. Um, the customers enjoy it. We actually sell more wine just by the case in a bulk fashion than we do just by the bottle though. We have a lot of just repeat customers that come in and they'll tell me that they want a, a grocery list of wine and I'll find it for them and then there we go. So it's, it's less work on their end. So you're know. like a wine distributor for Greenville. Well we try to be. We try to focus on the wines that you can't find at the grocery stores. Right. You know, I, I can't compete with a Kroger or a Walmart, but we do carry a lot of boutique wines that you can't find anywhere else. And we also take orders for those wines that you can't find here. I've got to stop and think because I know for Christmas a few years ago, do you carry something called Sunflowers or yeah, something like that? Yeah, in the past, yeah. I think I bought a case of Sunflower wine. Now, my brother in Carolina in uh, the Raleigh Chapel Hill, Ch Chapel Hill area is a wine connoisseur. And he really liked the sunflower yeah. stuff. And I can't remember which one we got, but I think that, it was a Chardonnay. It was a Chardonnay. Well, I know we shipped the case down. Yeah, if I'm it's, not mistaken. it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. <laughs> what were, what do you say be uh, two or three of your top selling reds and then top selling whites? Well, you know the rodeo red. I know that we can get it anywhere, but that's always a big sell for us yeah. in house. Right. Uh, the Louis Martini brands, as well as the Rafinos from Italy, are, are big sellers as well. So yeah. those are probably some of the biggest ones for us right there. What do you say most people in Greenville, are they reds or whites? Uh, it's not really the color, it's the, uh, the taste. They, they prefer their sweeter wines. Uh, Rieslings, Moscatos, okay. or the Lambruscos in the red. Yeah. 
Yeah, do you carry anything else in the way of alcoholic beverages other than the wines? We or not? a lot of craft beers. We have over 70 craft beers in here. We don't have a, a tap system. Everything's by the bottle. But we rotate those out a lot, but very much uh, based on a seasonal basis. Uh, IPAs, porters, stouts, everything. So we try to cover the whole spectrum as far as that goes. I noticed you have a sign over here. Was it mix of six? Yeah. Uh, you can come in and get a six pack, and you can get put in six different beers. And the highest price for any one of those beers prevails over the six pack. But it's a good opportunity to, to try different beers that you normally wouldn't. And there's you only got one of them, so if you don't like it, you're really not out much that way. Do you find a lot of Greenville people that come in? or your customers come in are willing to try different craft beers or are they, they going to come in and say hey I need a Bud Light? They are you know and I'll help them with it a little bit you know we've got a lot of different pilsners that are by some breweries out in Colorado or California and they're they're might be skeptical to try it but then I'll remind them that you know your your Miller Lite is a pilsner yeah. so let's so I say, just try it. You know, it, it might get them started on something else as far as a different taste aspect that they hadn't realized before. So it's fun. You can find much uh, in the way of demand for the porters and the stouts? The stouts, yes, and the porters, especially during the colder winter months. Okay. They, uh, you know, it's just like you always eat more family food, more friendly, you know, food like that. But in, during, the, during the winter, people were looking to get the, the darker red wines as well as his porters and the stouts. Right, yeah. Just it's a seasonal taste. Absolutely, okay. absolutely, yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to turn the camera around a little bit, and we're going to take a look at some of the other things that they offer here, some of the original things that they offered up here at Montage, and we'll be back in just a minute. Well, we've got the better looking half of the Cox duo here as Michelle's arrived on the scene. And uh, Michelle has promised you're not going to use too much of that southern accent on us, are you? I'll try not to. Oh, not I'll to. try. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, Michelle uh, uh, is, is a native of Charleston, as we talked about earlier, and then met Aaron up at Myrtle Beach, if I'm not mistaken. Let's talk a little bit. When Montage first started, the Rexes did a lot of work as far as florals and things that way, you don't do that so much anymore, but you, you still carry quite a line of different things. So let's talk a little bit about what you have here. Okay, well, yeah, when we took over, um, Rochelle was wonderful in all the flower arrangements, and I didn't do so well in that department. So <laughs> I've been in retail, I've been in worked express, and I used to run a bath and body, so I decided to just make sure I had things, pick-me-ups for all the women that come in here. So we have scarves and jewelry and lots of purses sell and then really pretty ceramics that a lady in Troy makes for me and body scrubs and lotions and just easy pick-me-up gifty items. I think a lot of people that come in for the first time they think they're coming here to get a soup and salad or sandwich they're kind of surprised to see that you have all this other stuff. Yes they are and they bring them back year and year and they bring their friends and come from all over and everybody comes in and says please bring one to our town we have nothing like this where we're from yeah we talked a little bit earlier with Aaron that you know it is very unique to have a, a, a establishment like this in a town the size of Greenville is that something that you've always kind of thought about doing or that's just kind of developed as you uh, were up here for several years and then this became available we always kind of knew we wanted our own restaurant but no, I did not think it would end up being a retail mix. But because I had the retail background, I felt like I could handle it. It was a little rough at first, but now I've got it down to a science of how much I can have and versus how much seating I need to keep for the restaurant and not take away from that. So, so you buy some things locally. You said over in Troy, somebody makes some of the ceramics and so forth. And then uh, the purses and the scarves, where, where do you get all that from? We go to Columbus to a show, and then I have off lots of reps that come in and sell to me through their catalogs. Let's talk just a little bit, too. Originally, the mezzanine was used for what? Originally? Well, like, that, yeah, back we going. Well, I know that they had, what, clothing or something up oh, there? Yes. Uniques used to be over there yeah. when Rochelle had it. And then when her Blue Moon restaurant closed, they took over that space and took their rest or their closing line over there and then we also had spencer landscaping up there for a little while janice did all of her florals and things That's up there right. for a while and then um jody Bourne came in with jack and her were together and she really went crazy in here and had a lot of things because she was in this business in indiana and then that dissolved and now it's just more seating and really comes in handy for our businesses in town. I was going to say, we've been up there several times like staff Christmas, well not Christmas parties, just retirement parties and things of that nature and it's great up there. I know some people go up and they play games up there or they have club meetings or something, right? Yeah, we do bridge and mahjong 
um, pretty much every day up there as a group. <laughs> well, just a lot of different things here. We're going to come back and talk to Aaron and Michelle a little bit more because we want to talk to them a little bit about some of the special events they host after hours up here as you watch the show on Montage here on the Wave Channel 5. Well, we've moved over here on the stage area at uh, Montage. Aaron, uh, this was here when you purchased the business, correct? Yeah, it was. Um, it just it, it creates a little bit of break in the room. This used to be an old furniture store. It was Wilhoff Furniture and then Greenville Furniture for years, oh. and it was wide open. And our, the previous owner put this raised platform area in here, and it it's just a nice break in it for. Uh, ambiance I guess for yeah. nothing else yeah I think a lot of people probably want to come up here and sit up here just yeah. a little different yeah. level up here uh, let's talk a little bit because you use this for a lot of different functions uh, how'd you come up with the idea and how long have you been doing like some of the events that are after hours I'm not sure how long it took before we decided to take that on because we were pretty overwhelmed at first but for several years now we've had several weddings on here lots of murder mysteries Ah, that's right. Um, wedding parties will sit up here and wedding showers. We just do pretty much everything up on the stage. Yeah. Now, I know you work quite closely with Dark County Center for the Arts on yeah. certain things. We do. Uh, we've done the, the uh, Wine Center for the Arts, the uh, Wine and Jazz. We've done 25 of those now. Wow. Um, and we've, we've taken that down to just once a year now. But we've also added in the Irish Wave, Irish Wave. which we, and we have an Irish band come in around St. Patrick's Day. In this past, uh, this previous uh, October, we did the, uh, the Zydeco Night, where we yes. had a Zydeco band come in, and that was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, just trying to mix it up, you know, you got to keep things new, otherwise it gets a little boring. So. Yeah. I know my wife brought me up here, geez, like three, four weeks ago. Was it the Poetry Society or Poetry Reading? I, she was trying to culture me, and I don't know if that succeeded, but I had a good time. After three glasses of wine, anybody would have a good time. <laughs> well, that's what we're going for. <laughs> uh, the library, we do the uh, Authors' Nights with the library. The Dark County Civic Theater, we have the uh, Murder Mysteries, and those are almost always sold out. We'll do six, five to six of those twice a year, try to back to back to back on the weekends like that. Um, and then we, we're always, always open for private events as well. Big retirement parties, like uh, Michelle said, uh, rehearsal dinners, wedding showers, um, class reunions, uh, all of the above, you know, we're available for. Yeah. Now, to s schedule this, they just they can come in or they call in or how do they get in touch with everybody to set this up? Um, they can call us or come in and get our catering menu and then we start there by quoting how many people they're going to have, what kind of food they want, and make sure our evening is open. And okay. after that's all in place, we can get going with everything else for them. Yeah. And while I'm thinking about it, uh, phone number that they can reach you at here? 937-548-1950. And I know you do a lot because I, I saw your website. So websites, Facebook, is that how you do some advertising then? Yeah, we do. We do Facebook and I'm trying to do Twitter. I'm trying to get 20th century. I'm still kind of <laughs> lacking on it. Um, but then the website's Montage Cafe, themontagecafe.com. And then our website is montagecafe at hotmail.com. Okay. And so, th and our, our on our website has all our catering information and our menu, so they can start there getting a quote from us yeah. for their event. I know I looked that up the other night, and you got a really nice website. Did you guys put that together? Who does that for you? Clinton Randall actually put Clinton. it together for us. Yep, okay. he's got his hands in a little bit of everything. Yeah. Yeah, he does a nice job. Very yeah. good job. Yeah. Well, anyhow. If you folks have not been to Montage, I know a lot of you watching this have been. It's just amazing everything they offer up here, the special events, the, the, the food, the, all the clothing and everything else that way, that way the wines and everything. And uh, hey, thanks a lot for uh, taking the time because I know you guys are always busy and certainly appreciate you being on here. This is Aaron Cox. We appreciate it very much. Again, we're thankful for the community for supporting us for the last 14, coming up on 15 years, and uh, we look for, uh, forward to uh, 15 more. Okay. And this has been Michelle Cox. Michelle, you did a great job of not breaking out that southern accent. <laughs> I try, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, on behalf of Nick Schmidt, our videographer, I'm Alex Warner. Once again, thanks for watching these downtown shows here on the Wave Channel 5 as we continue the Our Town series as we take a look at those things that make Greenville, Ohio, our town. Good night, everybody.